Hi, and welcome to part 6 of my tutorial series on using a tree view in Microsoft Access. In this part 6, I'm going to be talking about how we can insert new nodes into a tree view and into our tables. But first we need to look at how the nodes are sorted and related to each other, and then how we will fit these new nodes into the sorting scheme. If I right-click and select Expand All, I'm going to be looking at this, the coffee node and its three child nodes. Note that the coffee node has a requirement ID of 5, and as I look at each of the child nodes, I can see that they have an ID of parent, which is 5. And this is the same for all the three nodes. We also have a sort value, dbl underscore sort, which is a double. And you can see that for the first node, it's 1, 2, 3. So the sort node indicates which order the node should come in. So if I want to insert a node between the first and the second node, I need to give it the same parent, and I need to give it a sort value that is between 1 and 2, which in this case would be 1 and a half. And that is also why the sort value is sorted as a double and not as an integer. Before we start, I'm going to close this form, look at my requirement form in design view, and rename these two controls. Textbox underscore parent ID and textbox underscore sort value. I'm going to be referring to these controls later and that's why I want to give them a meaningful name. Note that these two controls are colored red. That is currently my indication that in the finished product I intend for these two controls to be not visible. The user never needs to see these fields, I just have them here in the demonstration to make it easier to see what's going on. So I close this form, go back to my tree view form, and you might recall I added code last time in part 5 so that when I click a node I get the text part of the node. Now this is the part we need to modify so that when I click a node I get the option to insert a new node. Switching to Design View and View Code, you can now see this is the part where I had the message box, the node x.txt, and this is where I want to now have a function to work on the node that is clicked. Let's call right click node, pass it the node. Copy this, move into module command bars, and add a new command bar. Public sub right click node, node x as common control library dot node x node, like this. So I need the options to insert a new node above, below, and inside. But first we need a command bar command bar as command bar, set command bar equal to the command bar collection, add the MSO bar pop-up, which is not a menu, and it's, this is temporary. We want it to be self-destroyed as the command bar falls out of scope. I need some command buttons command button insert above as command bar button set command equal to command bar dot controls dot add and this is the MSO control button and I'll add the cleanup as well while I remember it set command bar equal nothing set command bar button equal nothing. So this should have a caption, a text, which should be insert above. I want it to have a style, which is MSO, button, icon, and caption. I want it to have an on action, which is equal to insert new, that's the function, 
the equal sign is necessary to call a function. Insert new. In this case, in single quotes, I write above, that is the insertion type I specify, and the ID of the node. I need to get the ID, and for that I use the getID function written earlier, and call it to work on my node X. Finally, add a closing parenthesis like this. Now note that this syntax can be a bit troublesome to get correct, so if you don't get it the first time, don't give up, just try again. Another thing to note is that this doesn't always give such a meaningful error message. Let me just show you. If I ask the command bar to show pop-up now, switch to my form, right-click a node, insert above, you might note that I didn't get any error message, which is actually a bit odd, because this function doesn't even exist yet. So to test that my syntax here is correct, I'll start by adding my function straight away. Insert new. Gets an argument, which is the location of the new node, and it gets a ID. Note that I can't pass the node inside this function. I can't pass the node directly because I can only use strings and numbers within the on action argument. So for now I'll just do a message box of the location switching back. So I now know that my syntax in the on action is correct and that my function gets called. So I need to write of course this function but first I want to finish what I'm doing up here and I want to add a picture. So first let's switch to my form, go to design view, double click my image control, images, insert picture, and I have my images already prepared. I just need to remember to give them a key so that I can refer to them. Insert above, insert below, and insert inside. Switching back to my form, command button, just going to copy paste this, dot picture, equal to, and now use the get image list, and this is another smart feature. You might notice that I don't get any IntelliSense as I'm writing this part, but if I hit the control spacebar, Access will show me all the functions or methods starting with get. And now I can easily go down and select my get image list. Dot list images. And now I need the insert above, the key of my image. And finally, I want the picture. So if I switch back to my form, I now have an image for my insert above. Now I need to write the code for this. So I need to write function that will get the parent ID and the new sort value and input these as default values into my form. So first I need a few variables. Dim rs as a record set. Dim long parent ID as long. Dim double current sort as double double new sort as double. So the parent ID can be received by using a date lookup into the table requirements. So I need the ID parent from table requirements for which the primary key requirement is equal to the long ID I have up here. So the I'm basically getting the parent ID of the right-clicked node. There we go. So now I do a select case on the string location because the following parts are going to be dependent on whether I'm inserting above, below, or inside. So, case above 
set rs equal current db dot open record set select the id parent the dbl sort the primary key requirement from table requirements now note that sometimes you might think it's easier to only include the asterisks and simply say select everything and don't have to worry about what you're selecting but that is a performance issue there's no reason in this method to get the long text part of my requirement because I'm not going to use it so the simpler you keep your syntax the simpler you keep the less fields you retrieve the more efficient it will be okay so these are the so this is what I want to receive from the table of requirements but I want to limit it to those that have the same parent as the node I clicked on this is where the long parent comes in and I want to order it by the DBL sort so in this case if I was right clicking one of those nodes that were sub nodes of the coffee node I now have a record set containing the three nodes that are subnodes of the coffee node. So finally specify the type as a Dynaset type. Now, so the current sort value, I can get that. Oh, first we have our record set, find the node that was clicked. I do this by looking against the primary key requirement and saying it has to be equal to the ID of the node I clicked on. I can then fill the current sort variable by using record set dbl underscore sort. Now I need to find if this node I clicked on has any sibling nodes that are also above the node I clicked. So I do this by saying record set dot move previous. If record set dot end of file, then node has no siblings above. In this case, I set the DPL new sort to be equal to the current sort minus one. Else, now the else, this means node has a sibling node above. In this case, I said the dbl new sort is equal to the current sort, the current sort plus the sort value of the node I'm now looking at, which is the sibling node above, and divide this by two. So if we had the example of before, the current sort would be two because I clicked on the second node. Moving to the previous node and getting that value, this would be one. So the combination would be three divided by two, which is one and a half, and that is the exact value I wanted to get. I'll write the case below and case inside in a moment. For now, I'll just say end select case. Sorry, end select. So now I have the sort value and the parent. I need to get these as default values into my form. So I write dim form requirement as form. Now instead of just choosing the form, which is the most generic way of doing it, I can specify that I want to use this form requirements. Note that my form requirements, as you see it in access, has a prefix of form again. This is the one I choose. This has certain advantages, one of which is I get IntelliSense when I'm using it. Form requirement dot textbox parent ID, which is one of the reasons I named this earlier. If I had just written form up here, I only get the standard IntelliSense of a standard form. It doesn't know that this form has a text box for the parent ID. So text box parent ID dot default value equal to long parent ID form requirement dot 
text box sort value dot default value equal to dbl new sort. Now one thing about using doubles with a default value is that depending on your local regional settings you might get into trouble because the default value has to be formatted in the same way access expects it to be. So in my case I actually have to write a replace on the dbl new sort. Note that the double gets converted to a string because the replace function wants a string. Now in this string I want to replace the comma with a period because that is the way access expects doubles to be formatted whereas my local regional settings will format a double with a comma instead of a period. Just a slight thing to be aware of. Now while I did dip my form requirement I never set it so I have to do the set form requirement equals to the forms collection and I need to get my form tree view example so that's the main form I need to get to in order to get to my form requirements I have to go through the form tree view example because my form requirement is a subform on that form now it's stored in ctrl subform that's the control and I want to get the form within the control subform. So I now have the default value set. Now I need to add a new record. So I do form requirement dot record set dot add new. I've now added a new requirement. Now I clean up this again. Set form requirement equal nothing. So let's go give this a test. First, I just hit the compile and see that I apparently made a typo right here. Try to compile again and see that I managed to carry that typo through. Okay. Finally, it compiles and we can go look at it. So let's expand all and let's try clicking this node here. And I right click and say insert above. We can see that the form over here has moved to a new record. It has the parent ID of 5 and the sort of 1.5 just as we wanted it to. I want my new, my new uh, requirement to be a requirement and say testing above. And then I hit the save button. Here is our new requirement, testing above. Now we need to do the same for the insert below and finally for the insert inside. So switch back to design view and go view my code. First I do the case below. That is actually not so difficult. I start by copying the text up here and realizing that I never cleaned up my record set I also add that to my cleanup part. The record set is basically the same and I go through the same maneuvers of first moving to the correct record, the record I clicked, and then instead of move previous I do a move next and I see I made an error before. I use the end of file which is correct when I'm using the below but when I'm using the move previous this should have been beginning of file. And the node has no siblings. They should, of course, be below. Instead of doing minus one, I have to do plus one. But this part is still the same. So we now have the case below. And we now also need to write a command bar button for that. So dip. command button insert below as actually I'm going to copy this entire piece and simply replace the name down here insert below 
and here, right below, and choose the below picture. I'm going to add the command button insert below to the cleanup, compile it, and going to test that it shows up. Thus, now the last thing we wanted to add is an insert inside. One thing to note is if I click here and I want to insert inside, what should I do? Should I insert it as the first node or the last node or randomly? Well, certainly not randomly. In this case, I choose to insert any nodes inside as the top node of the group. Go down here, case inside. Now I need the record set to give me, instead of looking at the parent of the current node, I want to look at all its child nodes. So I will copy this and instead of looking at the parent ID, I'm going to look at the current ID. So I'm getting all the children of this parent of the node I clicked. Now, what I do is I go to the first node, if not record set, actually I do it like this, if record set dot end of file, then this means no children nodes. In that case, I set the BBL new sort to be one, else I take move to the first node, I say that's the current sort, so the new sort will have to be the current sort value minus one. The rest is still the same, setting the default. Actually, I have to do one thing, I have to set the parent ID overwrite it to be equal to the current ID. Let's go give it a try. We also need to add that to our command bar. Command button insert inside. And replace here and here. And add it to the cleanup. Compile it. Let's go test it. So if I right click the coffee and insert a new node, insert inside, I want that node to be at the very top. Top child node. Let's hit save. Let's see, it showed up right up here where I wanted it to. I also want to test the below. So let's say I click the very last node, say insert below. Last node, uh, that wants to be a guide. Hit the save and it showed up right here at the bottom where I wanted it to. So that was all I had for this tree view part six. And I realized this is probably the most difficult of my tutorials. But if you have any questions, please post on YouTube or go directly to my blog www.thesmilecoder.com and post there and I'm sure you'll find help soon. Thank you for watching.